Hi everybody. This is a sample problem on managing economic exposure coming out of chapter 12. It's very similar to one of the homework assignments that you have. I made this one up myself starting uh, with uh, one of those and also with reference to the example that's in your textbook. Uh, so without further ado, let's read through this. Hatton Resources, an international distributor of electronics based in the U.S., also generates purchases and sales in the Republic of Korea, better known in the U.S. as South Korea. In attempting to assess its economic exposure, it compiled the following information. First of all, we start with, start with sales. HRI sales are affected by the value of the South Korean won because it faces competition from South Korean exporters. It forecasts the U.S. sales and materials costs based on the following three exchange rate scenarios. Notice here that these exchange rates, unlike most of the situations uh, that we look at, we have the indirect exchange rate. That is, from the U.S. dollar perspective, it shows how many South Korean won or Korean won that one U.S. dollar will purchase. Uh, under this scenario where you have, uh, let's say the U.S. dollar purchases only 1150 then revenue from U.S. business is going to be this amount, $160 million dollars. Uh, U.S. priced purchases are $62 million. If the, if the exchange rate is $1 will buy 1,231, and this would represent a strengthening of the dollar and a weakening of the, of the one, then we have revenue from U.S. business that falls a bit, 145. In other words, the dollar is stronger relative to the one, not as uh, competitive uh, compared to South Korean exporters, so U.S. Uh, revenue would fall because we're losing some revenue to, say, South Korean competitors. But with the lower revenues, you have lower uh, materials cost as well. And if in this case, as the, uh, the won is especially weak, that is one dollar by 1,300 won, then we see that uh, U.S. revenue falls uh, again a bit further. But of course, their costs go down. Uh, US, U.S. sourced materials and um, that is materials purchased in the U.S. and priced in U.S. dollars is going to be $55 million. Okay, it, uh, its sales invoiced in Korean won are expected to be 60,000 million. <laughs> uh, you'll see from this exchange right here, it makes for some really uh, large numbers when we're dealing with, with won, but not to worry, we're going to use Excel to uh, deal with the calculations. But as a matter of fact, in the Excel spreadsheet, we'll put all values in millions, and so this will be 60,000, uh, but in, in uh, actual terms, this will be 60, 60 billion won. Its anticipated cost of materials purchased in South Korea is estimated at uh, 9,500 million won. And now we have information on fixed operating expenses, both in U.S. dollars and in Korean won. And we have variable expenses that are estimated as a percentage of sales. We're going to figure that variable operating cost after we convert these Korean won to, uh, well, the, the, the sales, we're going to convert sales to uh, U.S. dollars, and then we'll figure the, uh, essentially figure the uh, variable expenses uh, in dollars. Forecast, uh, here's the require. oh, by the way, interest expense estimated at $20 million on existing U.S. loans and uh, $5,000 million on South Korean loans. Forecast net cash flows for Hatton Resources under each of the three exchange rate scenarios. Explain how HRI's projected net cash flows are affected by possible exchange rate movements, and then explain how it might restructure operations to reduce the sensitivity of net cash flows to exchange rate movements without reducing its volume of business in South Korea, that is, without simply reducing revenues. I'm not sure how this will all turn out since I uh, took an existing problem and kind of played around with it. But let's go ahead to a spreadsheet that I created for this. I certainly hope that in solving these problems, you'll think about making life easier for yourself and, let's say, developing your skills at the same time uh, to use a spreadsheet for that. Um, not sure what happened there. There we go. Um, you'll notice uh, this follows uh, this, the format that's laid out in your textbook, but one thing I did was to eliminate the uh, dollar signs and the Korea, in this case, the foreign currency signs as well. So I can really use these cells to, uh, well, I can use Excel to perform some of the math for me. First of all, let's start uh, up here. There's the exchange rate. Once again, I just emphasize this is uh, an indirect exchange rate. With numbers like this, with the Korean won and with the Japanese yen, for instance, it, uh, it's more typical 
for uh, people to converse in terms of the indirect rate rather than the direct rate. So you'll recall the Japanese yen is roughly 104, 110 yen per U.S. dollar, and the number of dollars per yen is a fraction of a cent, I think just slightly under one penny. So uh, with a lot of decimal places uh, you, that you need to use. So it's a lot easier to converse and to calculate in terms of uh, the number, in this case, of one per dollar. And so you'll see these columns here. Let's, uh, there's, there are the three columns uh, set up here for the various exchange rates. And you'll notice here I've set up a column heading Korean won amounts and then U.S. dollar amounts here, uh, just so that we've, uh, well, it's clear what we're uh, working with. I look at some of the examples in the textbook and of course I think it could be some of those could be clearer and I've tried to do that here for you to uh, help you think through how you might be able to organize your work more clearly to make it uh, more clear. Uh, it's really important as I've emphasized to you guys before to think about that next person. Think about who's coming after you and who's going to be relying on your work. Make it as easy as possible for them to see what you've done. Well, there are the U.S. dollar sales, and that comes from that first part A of the narrative where we're told at exchange rate, uh, well, excuse me, uh, at various exchange rates, here's how U.S. dollar sales will change. The notion here, by the way, is when the dollar is, um, is strong relative to the yuan, that is, when one dollar buys this many yuan, as opposed to lesser amounts. The dollar is strong, the, the yuan is weak, and that makes it more difficult for U.S. companies to compete with uh, South Korean exporters. And so that's what's reflected, uh, or the reasoning behind these numbers that are smaller when the dollar is strong and the, and the yuan is weak, and higher when the situation is reversed, when the dollar is weak and the, and the yuan is stronger. Now we have uh, uh, ROK sales, actually, it's, or WAN sales, of course, but from the, uh, as a matter of fact, that's what that, I'll change that, KRW sales, uh, are 60,000 uh, 60, million. <laughs> so the, all these amounts are in millions of uh, dollars, uh, Korean, well, I should say millions of units <laughs> of currency. Uh, so I'll have to change that too, but I'm not going to uh, go back and, and uh, start this video over. There's our millions of dollars of sales. There's the 60,000 each time. And here is what I've done is say, in this cell here, as you can see, uh, take this amount here, divide it by that to convert it to U.S. dollars. So 60 million, uh, 60,000 million, 60 billion uh, Korean won converts to 46 million U.S. dollars. Over here, uh, at this exchange rate, it's 49 million U.S. dollars. In other words, the yuan buys more dollars at this rate than at this one. And over here, too, um, basically it takes only 1,150 yuan to buy one U.S. dollar. So 60,000 million yuan translates into 52 million U.S. dollars. So having converted these uh, Korean yuan sales to U.S. dollars, these are the total sales under each of those scenarios. And you might uh, see that even, well, in this case, even though we have a, a, uh, a stronger one here, that, well, one thing we haven't done in this problem, nor is it done in the other ones that I've seen, you might imagine <laughs> that a stronger one would result in, you know, maybe lower uh, Korean one sales. But uh, that would be, that's probably a, a chink in the, on the armor of this particular problem, that it recognizes that a stronger one uh, well, excuse me, a weaker dollar and a stronger yuan are going to help U.S. sales, but it doesn't seem to recognize that a stronger yuan is going to reduce the amount of uh, Korean yuan sales. But anyway, we'll just go with the problem here. The next, uh, after converting uh, these revenues to U.S. dollars, then we go to cost of materials. And you can see there's certain cost of materials in U.S. dollars that we plug in here. There's the Korean yuan. Uh, amounts and then of course same thing we've got this value here says uh, get take this amount and divide it by this so uh, 9,500 million Korean won given a, a 13 won per dollar exchange rate converts to 70 million US won at 1230 it converts to 66 million and at 1150 it converts to 59 million won in other words, once again, that 95 million won 
buys more dollars at 1150 won per dollar than it does when it's uh, 1300 won per dollar. That's something that's not all necessarily intuitive, and certainly I'm, I'm sure some of us grasp it more quickly than others, but it just takes some thinking through as to why, uh, you know, how these exchange rates work. My experience is uh, for some people it just comes very quickly. Others just have to, you know, work at it a little bit harder. But, you know, I hope you're not discouraged by that if it takes you a bit longer. I just realize for most people, I think this is true in general, you know, um, um, you know most of you, you know that some people grasp things a little bit better than others, but most of the people you're going to be working with, for the most part, are going to be, you know, of you know average or above average uh, grasp of some of these things. And if you have to struggle with some of this, you'll have a better idea of what uh, some of the people working with you and for you have to go through. So um, you can appreciate maybe uh, it a little bit more. That is the difficulty of it if you have to struggle more with it uh, than somebody who just finds it uh, too easy or very easy to, to get a hold of. Well, there's our cost of materials in U.S. dollars. We're doing the same thing here, operating expenses. You're given information on the problem on fixed uh, expenses in U.S. dollars and in Korean won, and so we're going through the same process. That is, this cell here says take that number and then divide it by the 1,300, in this case, won per dollar to get this amount, and then we're doing the same here. Some of these differences basically are fairly small, so when I round off to the nearest million, you just don't see it. But it is, uh, this is a different value than this one because of the rounding. You're just not going to notice that. And finally, interest expense. Okay, we see these, these numbers. Now, I'm going to attach the spreadsheet as well uh, so you can see where these values come from. I hope that... Uh, doesn't make it too easy for you in the sense that you, you should be able to, well, maybe I want to attach. I'll have to decide whether I want to attach the spreadsheet. Um, some of these things, it's not that long to build, and it's, uh, and it's a good experience. You might even find some better ways to, to build this than I did. Uh, I'm very aware that I learned a lot of things from you guys in terms of better ways to manipulate spreadsheets. You've had classes more recently, and um, anyway, so... I probably won't give you that uh, that assistance, but I'm here to answer questions if you if you if you have them. Well, let's look at the bottom line here. What we see is overall, as the yuan strengthens, the uh, U.S. dollar cash flows increase. In other words, the company's uh, cash flows in U.S. dollars are positively affected by the a strengthening Korean yuan. And we might imagine why that is because we have significantly more revenues in Korean won than we have expenses. Uh, we've got, what, 60,000 million Korean won uh, denominated revenues and only, what is this, about 16, about, you know, a little over 20,000 20, million. And so by far, uh, when, the, uh, when the Korean won strengthens, because we have a lot more revenues than expenses, that means that uh, we will end up uh, with much higher uh, cash flows in U.S. dollars from a, uh, as a result of a strengthening one than from a weakening one. And what that means is that we are, our, our operations are really, let's say, exposed to a weakening one. As the one weakens, you can see what happens here because we've got uh, relatively more, well, not just relatively, absolutely, uh, a good bit more Korean won denominated uh, revenues than we have expenses. As the won weakens, those, uh, those Korean won revenues don't translate into or convert to as many dollars as they did before. And so one thing they're asking us to do in all these problems is to say, okay, how could they restructure in such a way as to, let's say, uh, allay or to mitigate that exposure, in this case, to a weakening uh, Korean won. And the answer to that is, you know, we could uh, try to, um, well, we could try to generate fewer sales in won and more in dollars. In other words, tell some of our Korean customers that we will sell to you uh, only in U.S. dollar uh, denominations rather than Korean denominations. But one of the, I guess, cautions of this problem was, you know, how can we uh, restructure things in such a way to reduce the exposure without reducing uh, these sales in South Korea. So that's probably not practical to do that. The other alternative, of course, is to then try to source more materials 
um, in Korea to uh, incur more uh, operating costs in Korea and uh, possibly more interest costs uh, in Korea. In other words, look at these various expense categories and say, let's not try to decrease this, <laughs> but how can we shift things? So, of course, we could source materials, uh, more of those in Korea or denominated in Korean won and reduce our exposure. Same thing for operating costs. Um, uh, you know, seek to, uh, well, that's, I guess I've already said what I've got to say, find ways to increase, let's say to shift from U.S. dollar denominated costs to Korean won denominated costs. Borrow uh, more loans, borrow money in Korean won and replace some of these U.S. dollar loans, pay them off, and in that way in incur more more costs. It seems certainly by virtue of the of the numbers that the greatest opportunity is going to be here uh, in in terms of a more Korean dollar denominated uh, costs of materials. Um, but um, I think that's probably about all we can say right now. So the biggest, uh, I guess, challenge of this kind of problem is, of course, setting up the spreadsheet, uh, recognizing, you know, what is, uh, well, calculating these various values uh, when converted to U.S. dollars, and then, of course, overall look at the effect of this, knowing that U.S. dollar cash flows increase pretty dramatically as the yuan, in this case, as the yuan weakens, um, excuse me, as the yuan strengthens. Um, and we are subject to, let's say, exchange rate exposure, mainly in the form of the weakening of the Korean won, and then recognizing that if we want to do anything about that, it's really not decreasing Korean won nominated sales more realistically. It's trying to look for ways to um, shift our, uh, some of our expenses from U.S. dollar denominated to, um, to Korean won denominated expenses. Well, hopefully that's helpful, and I'm going to post this so that you've got it available to you. Best wishes.